Hey everyone, welcome to another training. I'm gonna continue with the pool environment that I have going on here. Last video we did this lifeguard chair and today I actually wanted to do a water polo ball. It's a great sport, uh, but yeah, we are going to make one of these balls and before we get into it, let's think about how we might approach this. So obviously it's a sphere and then we have kind of like a volleyball. We have these strips of alternating directions on each side of the sphere. And in this case, we have one, two, three. It'll be important with our UVs that we get a uniform UV direction because we have this pattern on the, the grip that's painted onto the ball that goes with the direction of these, these strips. So we need to think how, how can we accomplish this? Usually when you're modeling something, you want to approach it with the closest primitive shape that you can get to the final result. So you might think to yourself, let's create a UV sphere. But the problem with that, and I can show you, is if we create a UV sphere, let me get this stuff out of the way. We have no structure for those strips. We might be able to get some strips on the front face and the side faces, but what about the top? It's not a uniform kind of thing. Things start to fall apart. So a better alternative is actually a cube. When we look at this, we can have strips on this side and this side. We can have strips on all the sides, but of course it's a cube instead of a circle. So how do we change this cube into a circle? First things first, we need to think about those strips. Since we have three strips on each side, let's subdivide or add loop cuts. So control R and then scroll up to add two loop, loop cuts on each side. And now we're gonna have three strips here, three strips here, and that's gonna work out great. To turn this into a sphere, what we could do is simply subdivide it. As you can see, I pressed control two and that added a subdivision modifier. And that is closer to a sphere. It's a little bit more rounded, but it's still not quite a sphere. So for the final step, let's apply our subdivision modifier with control A. And then in edit mode, let's select everything and hit F3 to bring up our search bar and search for sphere. And we have this handy tool under mesh transform called two sphere. If we select that, just like magic, we can turn the cube into a sphere. And that is exactly what we need. Now we have all of the building blocks for the shape of our water polo ball. So what I'm doing now, as you can see in the reference, we have these grooves. So I'm just outlining where each of those are gonna go. And I'm holding down Alt to do a loop select and Shift Alt to add additional loops to my selection. We can go to X-ray view with Alt Z just to make sure we have everything. And that's looking good. Now, what about the strips? Well, we have, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. 12 divided by three is four. So after four faces, we should have a line going this way. So one, two, three, four, line. One, two, three, four, let's see, one, two, three, four, line. And to select that line, I'm holding down Control Shift to get the shortest path in between. Now we need to alternate on this side eyeballing those four spaces in between each one, and then we'll continue the pattern across the entire surface of the ball. Okay, so now we have that. One thing we wanna do is in object mode, hit Control A and apply the scale. That's an important step we wanna make sure we do periodically. Now, if we go back to edit mode, what we wanna do is to change each of these single lines into two lines. So to do that, let's hit Control B to bevel. And now we really have the shape of our grooves in between these strips. And that looks like about the right size here. Now what we could do is hit Alt-E and extrude faces along normals to bring those in. And we're not gonna go too deep, maybe like something like that. And let's subdivide this and apply Shade Smooth. And that looks great. Let's test something out on one of these grooves just to see if it's something we wanna do. Let's add a loop cut here and here just to make that really sharp. And I actually don't want that. So that's why I tested it just on one of them. I think the look we have going on here is really nice. The way that this is soft and just drops down to the groove there. One more thing I'll test is just doing 
a little bit of an inset maybe, just to sharpen that up a little bit. I do think I like that. Let's let's try let's try an alternative thing here. So let's say you don't want those really, really smooth corners there. What could you do instead of what we've done here? When you bevel, you could add three. Let's do that again a little bit bigger. I zoomed way in. You could add an additional cut there. Hit control minus to shrink that down. Then you could bevel this one again. And then we could scale this in on it's normal by hitting, hitting Alt S for scale along the normals. And now when we subdivide this, that has sharper corners and that is actually more accurate. So I think we're gonna go with that instead. As a last step here for the model, let's look at the size of your standard water polo ball. Looks like it's around 22 centimeters. So let's apply the scale, bring up our right hand menu with N and under dimensions, let's just type in 22 CM for centimeters. And that should be the standard number five size, which is kind of the typical adult water polo ball. Cool. So now let's get on with the textures. Again, looking at a reference, we want to make sure our UVs are going in a uniform direction. We have the yellow, we have the black. You know, there are also variations on this. Oh, looks like I'm offline. Uh, but yeah, and then we'll we'll throw a logo on there. We'll make up our own logo for this and we'll get some other text, but that, that comes in a minute. Right now, let's just focus on the yellow and the black. Adding yellow and black, and we already have the groove selected here. This will be our black material assign. Now, if we go to render view, we can kind of see what's going on. Let's take our yellow and just for starters, apply a yellow material. It's kind of a, an orangish yellow. I think I'm gonna brace this one more time. So I'm gonna go I for inset and then I'm gonna press O for outset and just add one more little bit there just to really brace that and then control plus to select that and assign that as the black material as well. Great, now for UV unwrapping and the rest of it. So let's quickly create a new material that we'll call UV. And let's see if I remember where this is. I think this got, oh, here it is. So under our overrides, we're gonna do a material override with our UV texture. Now, every material in the scene is using the UV texture and I'm doing this so I could check our UV grid. So I'm using an image texture, plugging that in and we'll call this image texture UV check or something and we'll use the color grid. Now we have this nice UV check texture, which actually, believe it or not, I think our UVs are we might have to change the orientation of some of them, but surprisingly, they're pretty good. And I think that's because we use the, the default cube to start with, which has kind of unwrapped it in a way that, that really works. So let's try to roll with it. Um, let's get rid of the material override and let's just start texturing this and, and see how far we can get. So let's grab the yellow and let's drop down a noise texture. And this noise texture is gonna go into a bump node, which will go into the normal. So if we take this factor and put it into the height, you can see we get this bumpiness, which is way too big because the distance right now is set to a meter, which is huge. That would be like the bumps on the surface extending out a meter long, which is obviously not what we want. And that's why things look a little strange. So if we put that way down to like, 0 0.01 or even 0 0.001 when we make these smaller, that'll be more appropriate. Now from here, I'm hitting control T to get the mapping and texture coordinate. And I'm gonna use the UVs to drive the size or the, the layout of this noise texture. Let's increase the scale. And now in the mapping, we can decrease the scale on everything except for a single direction. And which direction that is, just take some playing around. 
think this is the one that we're going to want. And then, as you can see, we have very long, thin noise texture along these strips, which is exactly what we want. Although we do want to change the orientation of some of these as well. So for starters, this is, this is totally fine. Let's go ahead and increase the scale to something really, really crazy like 1500. And that's what we want. But again, this is 0 0.01 meters, which is still way too big for these tiny, tiny little streaks, almost like paint, paint streaks here. So I'm just really reducing these dramatically. So as great as that UV unwrap has been for us, we're actually going to end up doing just a manual unwrap anyway. And that's because we want to get the, the grain or the UV direction on all of these going in a uniform way, which we can't do right now because all of these are connected, which would be really difficult. So I'll go ahead and just do a little bit of a time lapse. Right, we're back. That was pretty tedious, but we can go ahead and mark the seams now. Let's let's unwrap what we have so far. And yeah, we have all of our strips that look good, but then we have this whole mess, which is the black part, the lines. And to fix that, what we could do is let's just go to our materials, select just these lines, hit UV and Smart UV Project, just because I'm not worried about those lines as much. Now let's select everything and hit seams from islands just to make sure we get the seams for those black lines as well. Let's select everything, hit you, unwrap, and that's looking pretty good. As a final thing, what we could do, and these actually, I think all the grain is going in the right direction right now. Yeah, so that actually unwrapped pretty well. We can utilize more UV space, which is what I'm gonna do right now. If we bring up our UV Pack Master, which is a great add-on, uh, it's definitely worth the money. I recommend you go check it out. Let's pack, but let's disable rotation. So it's going to pack these more efficiently without rotating anything, which in this case, it didn't utilize too much more space, but it did get a little bit more space, which is just, I mean, we'll take anything we can get. So now all the grain is going in the right direction and we can start or continue to texture. So let's go to, let's see, I'm not going to need our UV editor anymore. Let's go to this black texture here and I think what I'll do is just add a Voronoi texture and go into another bump node, into the normal, distance into the height. And since we have clean UVs, let's use the UVs again. We can increase the scale significantly. And if you see this stretching in some places, that's because we have a subdivision surface modifier on top of our mesh. So in a final model, I would probably apply this and then UV unwrap it. In this case, the stretching is not too bad, so I'm not going to worry about it too much. Again, the distance on the bump node is a big deal. You don't want that to be too high. It's going to cause some issues. And you could play around with different kinds of texture here. In our case, let's just use the smooth F1 and we might increase the detail there. And again, decrease the distance. I really want this to be pretty subtle and this is a very rough texture in there as well. All right, so that, I mean, that could pass um, for a basic texture here. It's really pretty straightforward, but what if we wanted to do this Mikasa logo, logo um, which you see here on a water polo ball. We could do that, or we could make up our own texture. I'm not gonna go through, you know, or make up our own logo. I'm not gonna go through logo creation process here just because that's not what this tutorial is. It's not about 2D design. I'll come back once I have an Atlas texture with all of the various kind of logo and the, the words that we need to get on the ball itself. Okay, so as a final touch here, we have an image that I just created. Let me pull it up here so I can show it to you. Here it is. 
Uh, the brand for normal water polo balls is called Mikasa, so I did Sukasa. Um, and then, yeah, just competition, men's water polo, just the stuff you would find on a standard ball. So how do we get that image projected onto this ball so we could use it in the normal map and the base color and all of that good stuff? So to do that, I'm using one of my favorite add-ons. If you follow my stuff, you know I mention it all the time. It's called Fluent Materializer. You need to go buy this one right now, support the creator. It's fantastic. And what we could do with that is in the shader editor with that add-on, when we press F, we get this awesome little menu. And with that, we can add a decal. So let's add an image. From there, we just select our image and two things happen. First of all, in our ball, we get this little decal material. We also get this empty arrow that appeared on the scene. This arrow represents that decal being projected into the scene. So if we drop this into the base color, we can see here, we start to see our image come to life here, which we can scale down and rotate and do all the good stuff that we would do with any object. And let's see what's going on here. It looks like this is upside down, so we could just scale on Z, negative one, and that should fix it. So actually, I think I placed things pretty well the first time. Usually that doesn't happen. But now what we could do is we have this mask Oh, actually that mask is gonna be like the alpha channel. So really we wanna use this color channel since it's a black and white image. And we can use this to do some pretty awesome stuff. For example, I'm just gonna play around with this, see what those are. Okay. So for example, we could drop down a mix color and in channel one, let's do our yellow. And in number two, let's do a really dark black. We can use this as the factor. And we when we plug that in, boom, we get an awesome little result here. What if we wanna get rid of the texture on the black areas? We could do that as well. We could drop down a mix color node going into the height field, use this as the factor. And just like that, we don't have those lines on our letters. Instead, what we could do is grab this same bump node setup we have here. Let's see, uh, let's copy this. And in yellow, let's paste it here. And I think we can go from here to a normal. Yeah, so now we have the same texture down here, up here. Last thing we can do is we wanna inset this just a little bit, which I think to accomplish that, what we could do is something similar. Let's do, well, let's see, what if we do, ah, okay, I think that's doing what I want it to. When we were mixing, I wanted to mix this black color, and that does look like it is set down a little bit into the ball. We could go into a, a displacement field, but I think the normal map will be just fine. So there you go. That is the water polo ball. Um, what I would do now is if I wanted to keep this procedural, kind of the setup that I have here, I would just parent the decal empty to the ball itself, and now we can move it around. One thing you'll notice is on the reverse side, it is mirrored the wrong way. And I think, I think, okay, it should be our projection depth, but it's kind of going the opposite direction. So I think what happened is, let me just rotate this on 180. Yeah, and then we'll scale this back. So it does come with a handy little projection depth value here, and that'll stop it from projecting the wrong way. So yeah, that is our water polo ball. Thanks for coming along. I hope you learned something in the modeling process or the texturing. Um, some really useful tools here. Again, go check out UV Packmaster as well as Fluent Materializer. I really couldn't get by without using these tools. They're fantastic. That's all for this one. Thanks.